of our heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in the season, and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. The word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to dividing joint and marrow, soul and spirit, It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. For all scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Thy word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without without him was not anything made that has been made, and in him was life. And that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not even comprehend it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he came into his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to as many as received him, even to those who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. For there is salvation in no one else. There is no other name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, not even one. And the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. For he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and familiar with sufferings. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he carried our sorrows and bore our griefs. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead... We will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. For the Son did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. And everyone who believes is not condemned, but the one who does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. 
This is love. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So, beloved, let us love one another. Because love is of God, and everyone who loves is born born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, yet have not love, I am as a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy, and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and even have a faith that can move mountains, yet have not love, I'm nothing. And if I give all I possess to the poor and even deliver my own body to the flames, yet have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not easily angered and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always trusts, always protects, always hopes, always endures. This kind of love never fails. Now remain these three. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So a new command I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. So do not take your own revenge, but leave room for the wrath of God. For vengeance is mine, says says the Lord. I will repay. Instead, if your enemy is hungry... Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Jesus sat down on the hillside and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but rather with humility of mind, consider others more important than yourselves. Do not merely look after your own interests, but also the interests of others. And clothe yourselves with humility, all of you, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under God's mighty hand that he may exalt you in due time. For Jesus said, whoever would be great among you must become the servant of all. And whoever wants to be first must become everyone's slave. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And when the Son of Man comes in His glory with all of His angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. And He will separate the nations one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. 
For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was naked, and you clothed me, a stranger, and you invited me in. I was sick, and you cared for me in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer and say to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you naked and clothe you or a stranger and invite you in? When did we see you sick and in prison and come to you? And the king will answer them and say, Truly I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done this to the least of these brothers of mine, you have done it unto me. Then the king will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was a stranger, you did not invite me in. I was sick and in prison and you did not come to me. They too will answer and say, Lord, Lord, when did we see you? When did we see you hungry or thirsty or naked or a stranger or sick or in prison and not minister to you? And the king will answer them, truly, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did not do this to the least of these brothers of mine, you did not do it to me. And these will depart into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not by works, lest anyone should boast. For you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do. So be holy as I am holy, says the Lord. Be holy as I am holy, says the Lord. For I am the Lord your God who brought you out of slavery in Egypt. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any graven images. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. For this is God's will, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. For you are not called to impurity, but to live a holy life. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And do not be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Rejoice always, pray continually, and in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you who are in Christ Jesus. For to me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. For I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Jesus said, if any of you would be my disciple, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and come follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? So I say to you, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And we not, have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and discipline. 
Therefore, let no unwholesome words come out of your mouth, but only that which builds up those who hear it, that it may benefit those who listen. For reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And let there must not be any filthiness or, or foolish talk or coarse jesting among you, but rather the giving of thanks. So be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result that you might be mature and complete, lacking nothing. And we rejoice in our sufferings because suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope will not disappoint. For we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. And if God is for us, who can be against us? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you hope and a future. And you will call upon me and I will answer you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. So be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. If he sows to the flesh, he will from the flesh reap destruction. And if he sows to the Spirit, he will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So don't, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust can destroy or thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Because no one can serve two masters. He will love the one and hate the other. He will cling to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and riches. And remember this. He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And he who sows generously will reap generously. Each one should give what he has decided in his heart to give. Not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. So give and, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, we poured into your lap. For with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. And it is more blessed to give than to receive. For you know it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you by your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And behold, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Because you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. In the year that King Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And on either side of him stood the seraphim, and each had six wings. And with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they called out one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple filled with smoke. And I cried out, woe is me. I am ruined because I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal he had taken with tongs from the altar, and with it he touched my mouth. And he said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is atoned for. Your sin is taken away. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. Have this mind in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the very form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. And being found in human likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of that which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus said, The one who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice will be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came down, the floodwaters rose, the wind blew, and the house stood firm because it had its foundation on the rock. But the one who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rains came down, the floodwaters rose, the wind blew, and the house fell, and great was its destruction. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the path of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing its fruit in season. Its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Will you pray with me? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.